One of the more interesting quirks of the modern tech world is that there's a really important company at the center of it that no one really talks about, that doesn't actually make anything. But it fueled the smartphone revolution. It helps us keep fit, plays our music, keeps us connected, powers the internet of things, the cloud, the metaverse, supercomputers powering AI will power the future of automation, smart cities. This company is defining the very future of computing, a future built on one of the most successful technology ecosystems in the world, and a legacy of energy and power efficiency, lending hope for a sustainable future. One company everywhere. everywhere. And this company is called ARM, Advanced Risk Machines a semiconductor and software design company based in Cambridge, England. Obscure? Yeah, maybe. But ARM chips will be in everything soon. Whether you've heard about the company or not, we need to pay attention to this company. It may power the world and change the world in more ways than you think. The company was founded in 1990 as a joint venture between Acorn Computers, Apple and VLSI Technology now part of Philips. ARM is best known for designing and licensing specific architecture of microprocessors that power many of our mobile electronic devices today. Charges a royalty for their IP. Now we've all heard of Intel, AMD, Nvidia, Qualcomm, and we all love, well, everything electronic and smart connected. All these things will be licensed by ARM processors in the future, and for good reason. ARM designs and simply licenses its technology to a variety of semiconductor designers and manufacturers who then incorporate the architecture in their own products, mostly low-powered products or battery-driven electronics. What ARM creates are blueprints and small pieces of intellectual property. ARM allows engineers to design chips that perfectly fit their needs rather than having to settle for one of Intel and AMD's off-the-shelf components. So what's the deal? Well, what sets ARM apart is that their design architecture is based on what's called RISC, a type of chip design that is much simpler method of computing within the chip, and one that uses much, much less power and energy. Well, simply put, instruction sets set out the very heart of computing chip design. It's the vocabulary all chips are designed to, if you will a blueprint for how all parts of the CPU operate. Most powerful chips of late are based on an architecture called x86 or CISC. Originally developed and licensed by Intel, that in contrast uses a lot of power and energy to perform compute cycles or clock cycles, but it has a high performance ratio. CISC can perform complex tasks by executing less instructions, which takes more time, while RISC will do the same job executing more instructions, which takes less time. The end result is approximately the same, but RISC is simpler by design, cheaper, and uses a lot less energy to perform the task. Higher performance, that is, until recently. ARM chips have not only surpassed x86 in terms of performance, but are doing so using a fraction of the energy consumption. Imagine the impact of desktops, whole office blocks, data centers, supercomputers processing the AI revolution and crypto miners all switching to ARM architecture will be huge. Huge for computing, huge for the climate crisis, and huge for the company ARM. And they should be going public sometime this year. ARM, through smart design, is helping technology accelerate and stay on the right side of history as part of a more sustainable future. And no one is talking about it. Let's get into it. You are watching The Quickening. The future, the future is, is, now. is now. Let's just back up a little bit. The story of ARM is somewhat like how Tesla took on legacy auto through smart design and an insatiable will to change the world. But unlike Tesla, a few companies are involved. Let me explain. During the golden era of the 90s and 2000s, most chip designers and manufacturers 
ran with x86 chips to, due to their versatility and performance. It became the standard of Windows-based PCs, the standard of, well, everything. As the software market grew, so did Intel, and the thrust for computing speeds became the focus as new chip designers and manufacturers came to market. ARM chips only started gaining popularity by 2000, when companies such as Nokia started using ARM chips in mobile phones due to their power efficiency. Quickly thereafter, all mobile phones manufacturers followed suit and switched to ARM. Largely thought of at the time as being somewhat of an inferior design, only suited for simple tasks and devices that require energy efficiency, the desktop market was where the real men played, where x86 ran supreme. Higher performance chips consumed more energy, but this didn't matter because PCs and desktop models were plugged into the wall. But this became a problem by the late 2000s, when the market began to shift towards smartphones and tablets. These devices had smaller batteries to keep the weight down, and users wanted to use them all day on a single charge. X86 chips were a poor fit for these new devices. The world went mobile. So tech companies looked at ARM and started paying attention to the design and development of the chips, adding more features and squeezing out power. As ARM licenses its design to chip manufacturers, it allowed smartphone manufacturers to integrate a variety of functions into a single chip, bringing once separated components tightly packed together. Data storage, image processing, audio chips, and neural engines, random access memory. This further minimized power consumption and spurred chip designers to push the boundaries of performance through, well, design alone. An integrated circuit on a single chip or SOC system on a chip, ARM had reached an inflection point where computing devices no longer needed to be faster, but they needed to be more efficient and portable. The x86 crowd largely ignored the progress in mobile chips as the margins were smaller. They ignored the fact that these chips were slowly catching up in performance. Besides, between 2007 and 2010 was the dawn of cloud computing and the massive demand for desktop architecture to power the likes of Dropbox, Salesforce, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Drive and iCloud. The cloud was a big deal for x86. It's the internet today. Traditionally, we haven't seen desktop or mainstream laptops with SOC architecture because there's a limit to how much stuff you can cram into a single chip. But fast forward to 2020, and a little fabulous company called Apple introduced the world to the first ever desktop ARM architecture chip, the M1, Apple's own desktop silicon the first mainstream design of a paradigm shift. By then, Apple's mobile chips, the A-series, were so powerful and efficient, they outperformed the legacy desktop market. The iPhones were literally more powerful than most high-end PCs. This marked Apple's absolute decoupling from x86 and Intel. Apple had shrunk the entire desktop motherboard down to a single chip and a new era was born. As you know, Apple have had a handful of moments that were game changers. The introduction of Mac OS in 2000, the performance quest and switch from PowerPC to Intel in 2005, and of course the iPhone in 07. However, Apple's relentless development of their own silicon from 2010, and their relentless quest in refining the design for ever faster devices that used the least amount of energy possible, led to the design and manufacturing of now extremely powerful chips, using a fraction of the energy of their peers. A fraction. One of the key factors in their success is the tight integration of hardware and software. Apple designs both the chips and the operating system that runs on them, allowing them to optimize both components to work seamlessly and efficiently, a radical shift towards an integrated concept, a concept only possible because of ARM. I'll let the best tech channel, Marquez Brownlee, explain. Faster than every Intel Mac ever made, 
And then I didn't plug it in for four days, totaling a little over 10 hours of mixed use and still had 17% left. So optimized apps, as you may have figured out, are amazing. They perform incredibly well and they sip battery life. This marked a significant turning point for plugged in compute. Data centers and cloud servers that power the internet are waking up. Performance and energy use is a big deal. x86 requires a lot of power to run all the separate chips, a fragmented design, and an insane amount of energy to cool them down. The platform is inefficient. To put things in perspective, Apple Silicon on average uses 65% less energy than Intel desktops. The chips run cooler, they don't need fans. 65%, that's a potential three to 5% change in global energy demand and usage by 2030. Desktop computers never had to be power efficient. No one really cared. As chip manufacturing is reaching the limits of physics and arguably the rate of performance increase at the x86 chip level is slowing down, plateaued. Future performance innovation is to explore circuit design and optimize software for that design. The two have to marry. Moore's law has long acted as a roadmap for the tech industry. What started as a prediction became a blueprint for progress. The number of transistors on a chip would double approximately every two years while relative costs decreased. A blueprint that's obsolete today. Keeping performance and energy numbers stable is, well, simply not enough. In today's world and for the future, efficiency is everything. Performance per watt will become the new paradigm, guiding product roadmaps that extract an increasing amount of performance from an ever decreasing power envelope. And ARM is the future that makes that possible. Digital technology will exponentially grow as we turn to AI, the Internet of Things and 5G Digital technology will fuel us into the next industrial revolution and ARM technology will provide that high performance efficiency and high, highly specialized processes needed for this revolution. And Apple are showing the way. Strangely, it's a consequential result of chip design architecture that spurred the mobile revolution that went against the grain of the giants Ironically, we have the giants to thank for this paradigm shift. In 2007, when Intel turned down Apple to make chips for the iPhone, believing they would never take off, that the margins were too small, was the very moment Apple pivoted and committed itself to designing their own custom silicon. Intel's decline, or x86, is a classic story of disruptive innovation. Like legacy auto and the EV revolution, Legacy chip manufacturers have a tough call to make. Data centers are already transitioning to ARM processors. Supercomputers are already running on them, claiming number one ranking in processing speed, the Fugaku in Japan. You know, it's a rare opportunity when we get to witness a defining moment as it develops that will shape the next decade of innovation and simultaneously answer climate concerns for a sector immune to change. Pay attention to the evolution. We're gonna hear a lot more about this company in the next few years. Well, I hope you found this episode interesting. Thanks for watching and please leave me a comment if I missed anything out. May the force be with you. Peace.